Welcome in, Capo and Joe. We are ready to fire out a podcast all dedicated to the Jacksonville Jaguars beating the Dallas Cowboys. That's what we're going to try and lay out for you today. Joe C. from XL Primetime, head coach formerly of the Dallas Cowboys, Dave Campo, who always joins us with some great knowledge. We call them Wow Your Thoughts because we're brought to you by Beaver Chevrolet, and they like to wow you every day right there on the lot on Phillips Highway. Or you can log on to beaverschevrolet.com, especially towards the end of the year. You might want to go buy a Christmas. Have you ever bought an automobile as a Christmas present? Coach? No, I haven't. But I will say this. I think uh, uh, Beaver Chevrolet can wow you more than I can wow yeah, you. I don't know about that. They can do it in the automobile industry. You can do it right here. All right. So let's get into a few things because we're probably going to look back at Tennessee. But since our normal Campo and Joe spot is on a Tuesday, we're looking back most of the time. But this is on a Thursday, so we want to just look ahead. because. Everyone has done the celebrating after beating the hated Titans. Now it's time to deal with Dallas. So I want you to throw some stuff at us, and we'll go both sides of the ball and all that kind of stuff. But let's just start off big picture. We're, we're going into a ball game in December, Coach. You have been part of this coaching staff with the Jaguars when December games mattered, okay? You know what this is all about. How much is it ratcheted up now that this football team, believe it or not, has a chance mathematically to make the playoffs? Well, uh, first of all, every game still comes down to matchups with me. So mm -hmm. you have to be realistic right. about who you're who you're playing against. Right. But there's no question that if you're playing against playoff competition, then you know that should bring out the best in mm -hmm. you. Now, uh, I think an example of that is they've beaten two division winners here out of the last three. Yeah. The one they lost was not a division winner. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I think it brought out the best of them. And hopefully that same thing will happen in this ball game because there's no question the Cowboys, in my opinion, after looking at them a couple times this week, right. uh, they're a Super Bowl contender. There yeah. is no doubt in my mind. So it's going to be a tough ball game, but it should bring out the best in us right now. And I think we have some confidence. You know, we were just talking about Seinfeld a minute ago before we launched our Campo and Joe. I don't know if you remember the episode where one minute she looks beautiful, the next minute she, you know, she scared you a little bit. That's the Dallas Cowboys in a lot of ways. I, I call them an up-down team. I call them an enigma because you just can't quite identify who they are. They are second guest and they come out that Sunday and they impress and soundly defeat the team they're playing. Then Jerry Jones comes out and says, this is the most complete game I've ever seen since I'm on the Cowboys, which was nuts when he said it. And then they lay an egg. They almost lost to the Houston Texans this past week. And I know every Jaguar fan out there wanted to make sure they beat the Texans so they could come in here and maybe Jacksonville could beat them. Well, first of all, I'm happy that they they ended up winning. Yeah. Because I think in, in that situation, uh, you don't necessarily want to face a, a uh, uh, crazy outfit because yeah. they blew a ball game. You know, uh, they won the game. Uh, and they basically uh, sh showed themselves that they can win at any time during mm -hmm. the ball game. So, yeah. to me, that's a, that's a plus though for us that that they did lose that or uh, didn't lose that football game. Now we we talk primarily about Dak Prescott in a complimentary way. I think a lot of people look at him and go, "This dude's dynamic. He can run the show. He's multifaceted." But coming out of these last couple of games, even Jerry Jones is talking about whether or not the risk that he takes is the reward there at the end. He's thrown a few picks this year. So let's start with Dak Prescott and how you think the Jaguars might be able to defend him. Well, Dak's a good quarterback. Uh, you know, whether or not he's in the top four or five, I, I don't know that. I know this. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, he has shown the ability to win big. Right. Uh, and I think part of the situation is something that we talked about with, with uh, Trevor earlier in the year. Dak believes he can do anything at any time. He mm -hmm. can make every throw. He can, you know, put it where it's not supposed to go and right. still be successful. Mm -hmm. So early in ball games in the last four or five, he's been pressing a little bit early uh, to to make some big plays. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of been his uh, problem here of late because he's thrown some interceptions in the first half. Uh, we've got to start early against him. I think we've got to give him the, the – uh, uh, pressure that he needs to get, mm -hmm. the the uh, coverage scheme differences that, that we can do, that's the way to attack him. And and we can't get the running game going to where he can sit back there uh, right. because we can't rush the passer. You know, I sit there and I think to myself, defensively, 
this game plan that Mike Caldwell has to come up with might be as tough as any team they face sans the Kansas City Chiefs, and maybe even more than the Kansas City Chiefs, Coach. And the reason I say that is because you have now Pollard and Elliott coming out of the backfield. Kansas City didn't necessarily have that. You've got Dalton Schultz and other tight ends. You've got C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup. We can go on and on. Right. Do they have more? We- do they have the most weapons? You think maybe this team has seen? Well, I think they have the most weapon we've seen this year. Okay. Uh, and and you know it really kind of brings me back to when I was with the Cowboys all those years. You know, we had offensively, oh, yeah. we had a lot of firepower, but we had an outstanding tight end. Mm-hmm. We had two one outstanding receiver and one very good one. Mm-hmm. And then we had Emmett Smith. And so, and then the quarterback, Troy Aikman, you put those things together, this team has that. Right. You know, I'm not sure, uh, you know, comparison with Troy Aikman and, and uh, Dak Prescott's, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's six or one, half a dozen, they're a little mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. But they have the ingredients offensively. The one thing that they don't have right now, though, is they don't have the same offensive line that we had. Mm-hmm. They lost steal the the yeah. right tackle in this last ball game and PFF grades uh he was the best offensive lineman now uh Tyrone Smith was out he's coming right. back right but still the right tackle position is not going to be as good as it's been okay so let's do both of those tackles because a torn ACL and MCL for Terrence Steele he's out that's terrible for them and then Tyron Smith coming back from what was an avulsion fracture? We were talking with Dr. Barry about this, which is pretty significant. Absolutely. And so this is his first game back. You move Jason Peters out of the middle of that line and you put him out on the edge. I'm not saying that this pass rush that Jacksonville showed against the Titans all of a sudden is ready to ignite, but shouldn't they have some packages to try and test those two? Absolutely. I think this is a game where you would hope that that we would get some pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and again, it all starts with stopping the run because yeah. – you know, if they're if they're making yardage on first and second down, we're in trouble. Mm-hmm. If if they have to go to third and long, then I think that that makes a big difference. With Tyron's not going to mm-hmm. be a hundred percent any way you look at it. You mm-hmm. know, not the first ball game. Right. So that and whoever you know, if they go with Peters outside, you know, mm-hmm. that's an old timer. Now yeah. he had played pretty good last week mm-hmm. watching him, mm-hmm. but uh, that's not the same as having a really good young right offensive tackle. Right. So we should be able to get some pressure. Uh, if we get them into the right frame of mind. But if everything is, you know, play one, play two, another first down, play one, play two, another mm-hmm. first down, uh, and they don't, and they get to third down and it's third and three and two and four, we're in a lot of trouble yeah. offensively. That's a play action game. They can do a lot of things to fool a defense and they can go over the top. So what scares you the most? After making sure they, if let's just say they button up the run, what's the next recipe to a win on the defensive side? Well, they have to know where where uh, C. D. Lamb is mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. sure, and and you have to force the other guys. And you know Gallup's a good receiver, but yeah. he's not C. D. Lamb, and still coming back from an ACL. Yeah, and coming year. back off injury, and yeah. then uh, you know I think Schultz is good, but I don't think he's uh, Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think you have to take care of Lamb. Mm-hmm. as best you can, and then you have to force the ball to the other guys, and hopefully you make as many plays as they do. Yeah, and we don't know health-wise whether everyone's going to be back, and I was curious what you thought about maybe a, a big nickel with more than with the three safeties like we saw a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you can do that against the Cowboys, but Andre Sisco's just now getting back. They're not quite sure the health overall of some of the other guys in the secondary. How would you make sure that – because you've got to account. Those linebackers cannot be burnt by Dalton Schultz and company. Yeah, this and, go around. and you also have the ability of Pollard to come out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. You know, he's different than oh, than, yeah. uh, than Elliott. Yeah. Uh, you know, Elliott's a between-the-tackle guy. Pollard's an, on the edges yeah. and Everywhere. pass out of the backfield, those kind of things. So – you know they put a lot of pressure on you there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the thing that that uh, you know that the the hope is that first of all we're not going to be able to go to the big nickel package unless they have two tight ends in the game. Okay. And I don't know how much in They'll this game that. they okay. will have two tight ends in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I would think looking at our secondary and the struggles that, that we've had they would keep two wideouts in the game the majority of the mm-hmm. time. So. Uh, for us, it's going to be important that we can control the w- run with, you know, playing enough man to man, playing some three deep zone where we can, you know, get 
eight in a box and do it that way. All right, I'm going to give two numbers, which I know Jaguar fans won't like, but that's just the way it is. Uh, Jacksonville ranks 28th in pass defense. They give up over 250 yards. And then the other number that definitely is worth pointing out is that they're 28th in sacks. They've, they've got less than two dozen sacks, and here we are down to the final four games of the season. So they've got to create – something to force Dak into some quicker decisions because if they don't, then it's going to be a CD Lamb show. Yeah. And again, I I you know I hate to to say this, but I really believe I believe you have to make them throw the football in order to to beat this team. Because mm-hmm. you know, if they get the running game going, as I said, and they don't get into a lot of third and real longs, mm-hmm. we've got an issue. Yeah, and that that's going to be the worst. All right, so let's flip it and go to the other side because we know it's going to be difficult to stop Dak. You know what my my slogan this week is? We're going to make Dak yak. Yeah, well, if he yaks this week, that'd be good for It'd us. It'd be awesome. It'd yeah, be awesome. But that absolutely. Means, that means they got to hit him, and I don't know that they'll be able to do that. So let's go to this quarterback and, and what really has happened and what you think might happen Sunday offensively. So Trevor has been on a tear since week nine. He's led the NFL in completion percentage. He's second in passer rating. He's fourth in total QBR. He's thrown 10 touchdowns, zero picks. And these are all great things to hear. And taking it to another level is what we're seeing right now from Trevor. Can he keep that going? Well, we should be very, very excited about those stats going forward because, you know, again, you've heard me say this a number of times that this year was not going to really be about this year. Mm -hmm. This year is really about next year. Right now. Do we want to beat the Cowboys and win out and go to the playoffs? Absolutely. But at the same time, when you hear that quarterback, uh, what he's done the last four, four or five weeks, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's the real deal. Going forward in this ball game, uh, you know the thing he has to deal with is is staying out of the long yardage situations. Right. Just to the op, you know, the opposite of what's uh, mm-hmm. going on the other side. Mm-hmm. We have to get them into third and longs. We have to stay out of third and longs in this ball game for mm-hmm. sure. Because just as an example, uh, this defensive football team from the Cowboys mm-hmm. to me is what the difference is between some of the clubs that have have faltered at the end Mm -hmm. and one that can make a run at the Super Bowl, which Mm -hmm. the Cowboys can, they have 48 sacks. We have 23 sacks. That's twice as many. Twice as many. And they have 77 tackles for loss, whereas we have 55. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in this situation, uh, we've got to be able to run the football some and stay out of those third and longs. And the quarterback right now, Trevor, can do it. Mm-hmm. If he, you know, he's shown that he now can handle some pressure. He can handle, uh, you know, situations where he has to come from behind those kind of things. Right. But I think it's important this week that we get off to a good start. Yeah, and and the fact that he's been able to make quicker decisions, move up in the pocket accurate. It's funny, a couple of weeks ago, and you know I was a little critical, I just felt like even though there were a lot of drops, ball wasn't exactly where it needed to be. And he he just self-scouted himself and comes right back this next game, has another great game, puts Zay Jones back in a position to make plays. And the other thing that I really liked about it, and I, we asked you this earlier on XL Primetime, is Doug Peterson said, what haven't we done in a while that defenses aren't expecting? And he goes out and he puts a game a game together for Evan Ingram, who had 11 catches over 160 yards. It was an unbelievable game for him. Well, he he just took over kind of what Kirk has been doing, mm-hmm. and and that's great coaching, mm-hmm. you know, because you're going to look at for the guys that are hurting the other teams. You know, this is a copycat league, right? And when you look at at uh, you know, when a team studies the other team, they're looking for guys at what they do and what they don't do. Right. You know, if they got to line up somebody on, on uh, you know, on a certain guy, they're going to do that. For mm-hmm. example, I promise you that we're probably going to take uh, uh, Tyson Campbell and put him on number 88 because they're going to have to play some man defense to stop mm-hmm. the run. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, those are the kind of things that Doug has done a great job, in my opinion. Uh, I think that's one of their strengths. And again, they've got some really smart guys on game planning. Mm-hmm. You know, McCoy, I do uh, like that. Uh, Press, uh, mm-hmm. Taylor. 
Uh, Can I shout out Jim Bob Cooter? Jim Jim Bob Bob. Cooter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those guys are all pretty experienced and smart guys. And I think they do a really good job with that aspect of things. Yeah. And I I love that. I think that's what has empowered Trevor. I really do believe that. And Doug knows that he's got a guy that can uh, absorb everything he's throwing at him and what the other coaches are throwing at him. And they can go out and execute. Trevor Lawrence came out earlier this week and basically said that he made up his mind to change other people's mind, and I'm paraphrasing, after the London game. And he said he was sick over poor play. Should have won. Should have won that football game. That's If I had to put a game at the top of the list that they should have won, I, I fight over the idea, how the hell did they lose to the Texans? And then how the hell did they lose to Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos? Those are the two that I, and the Giants I might throw in there. Yeah. But anyway, it drove him crazy. And he also said that he was almost uh, – taking stock in people that second-guessed him after yeah. that. I think that's fuel. I love that. I have yeah. no problem with it. I don't have any problem with that either. And, and, and you know, of course, I, I've heard your shows, mm-hmm. uh, the primetime shows, mm-hmm. every, every day. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, one of the things that Leon made the comment that it, it, it really kind of fires you up, and then Matt came back with, <laughs> well, why, why is that happening? You should want to be the best every single play. Well, it's human nature. Why, you know, if somebody attacks you, if you're a competitor, you're going to, you're going to fight back if you're a real competitor. Yeah. And that's who, you know, who uh, Trevor Lawrence is, in my opinion. And that gives you that fuel. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's just uh, another thing to, to, you know, know, everybody says, don't put anything on the bulletin board that's going to fire up the other team. Well, it's human nature. If yeah. somebody uh, attacks you, you're going to react to it. And by the way, this was an attack from within. This was people being critical of Trevor here that yeah. fired him up. Absolutely. Now, now, let's think about this. They come out of the London game. He knew he played terrible. He said, I'm going to commit to change. He started changing, started playing better. We just threw the stats at you. Then take the way they played against the Lions, and he called his team out. Absolutely. That and was that's huge. Why, that's why he's a winner, yeah. you know, and 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 uh, why he's won as many games as he has, right. and why he's a leader. And the more good things he does, the better his leadership is going to oh, yeah. be. It's just common sense yeah. that, you know, uh, positiveness on your ability makes you more of us uh, uh, able to say the right things right. to get your team fired. You no, know, I joke around and say the football Jesus uh, with apologies to Father Tom and and, right. and, and Padre and all them, but uh, he he's creating a flock. Yes. And, and they will follow. And, and the thing is, is that he is less mistake prone. He's making more plays. And when he said his team laid down, he included himself in that against the Detroit right. Lions. Right. So just to put a bow on this, how do they take that win over the Titans in Nashville? That was a road win. Think about what has happened this year, Coach. They went out to the uh, West Coast. They hardly ever succeed out there. They beat up on Justin Herbert and the L.A. Chargers. They have won against, as you mentioned, division winners uh, two of the last three weeks. They beat a team they hadn't beaten in basically a decade up there. That's a lot of good. That's that's coming out of this year. Yeah, well, that's a lot of confidence, you know, that you that you're capable of, you know. And I think you measure yourself, you know, as a coach, you want them to understand that that measures who you are when you win games that are you're not supposed to win. Right. And and you know, going into after Detroit, we weren't supposed to beat uh, the, Tennessee. Tennessee. No, no. I mean, it just wasn't going. But this team is different, and I think from a confidence standpoint that's where they're going to have to come into this football game with that kind of feeling but they also have to look within themselves and say what did I do this week right coming off that game and and that's why Trevor said he comes with a little chip on his shoulder mm-hmm. he should yeah so should everybody else in that ball club because the only way they're going to win this Sunday is if if they've done everything they can between that end of that last ball game to the start of this ball game Mm -hmm. and then continue it all the way through everything that they did. They've got to do the same thing to have an opportunity in this one. All right, let's wrap it up. I want you to maybe give us one wild card thought that you have that you think could be the difference if the Jags win, but let's go Peterson and Mike McCarthy. I was a Mike McCarthy fan coming into Dallas. I'm not as much because I just don't think he's handled a lot of the situations there as well as, as maybe I think he should or could. Doug Peterson versus Mike McCarthy. 
What do you think? Well, that's a hard one because, number one, I, I really don't know Mike McCarthy that well. I just yeah. know that he's had some issues with game management and some things that, that are along those lines. Mm -hmm. You know, I and guess the you, up down of this. Yeah, team. yeah, and and I guess you could kind of say the same thing with Doug mm -hmm. uh, on you know going for some fourth downs mm -hmm. that maybe other people would not have right, done. Right. So it's kind of hard to measure them. I will say this: Doug Peterson has shown me this year that he knows how to run this ball club. Mm -hmm. I don't think McCarthy, with the up and down, has shown that he has the ability to do that week to week. Yeah. So, you know, my feeling is that Doug Peterson's the right guy for this team. That's all I can say. Right. I don't know if McCarthy's the right guy for that team, but mm -hmm. I know that I, in my mind, Doug and his staff are the right people for this team right now going forward. Yeah, I love how you say it. And you also have said Dallas is, is good enough to win a Super Bowl. So if they don't, if it, let's just say... And, and this is just me being the forecaster of doom, is that if they if they make it to the postseason, they are right now a top four team in the power rankings. A lot of people love them. But if they get knocked out in the first week, he's gone. Sean Payton is walking through that door. Uh, probably. And that's yeah. probably the case. And, yeah. and, and, you know, I think you look at you look at the, the situation that's there right now. Uh, they've got to win out. I mm -hmm. mean, they're not in a situation where they can relax because nope. there's some guys right on their heels. Uh, of the wild card. Yeah, exactly. They're playing yeah. for the wild card. Absolutely. Now, they could win it all out and, and win the division, too. Right. But that's unlikely. The, 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 uh, the likely thing is that they've got to continue to win to get the wild card mm -hmm. spot and, right. and position. You give us your wild card for Sunday. One thing you think might, could, should, would need to happen for, for Jacksonville to be victorious. Well, contrary to a lot of people, I believe that we're going to be able to run the football against this team. Right. And that's, to me, the key. And the the reason that I believe that is that Jackson, uh, excuse me, the Cowboys, their front four, mm -hmm. they stop the run on the way to the passer. Okay. Okay. A little bit like the team we just played, but mm -hmm. I think we'll have a better scheme, some traps inside, some quick stuff to where, you know, they open up seams because they rush the passer and play the run off of that. Okay. Whereas reading, rather than reading and, and being in gap control. Mm -hmm. So I think they have some gap control issues, which shows that they're like 21st against the run. I think that's the key to the football game right there. And I believe we're going to be able to run the football against them because I have confidence that after watching last week, uh, that we're going to be able to have some things for them in the running game. I love it. I love it. And you mentioned ETN last week, protecting the football, even in open space. That's a big deal. He's got to come up big. He can't cough up the football. Yeah, I week. think they have some guys that go after the football. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we've got to do a good job there. Yeah. And uh, Trevor over Trayvon. Let's see if we can uh, have it uh, in this dig we're talking about, yes. not Trayvon Walker. We'll find out whether he's healthy or not. He's, he's in a boot. And another thing, mm -hmm. stay away from digs. Yeah. Make sure you know where number 11 is. <laughs> Uh, from an offensive standpoint. Yeah, Micah Parsons is one, uh, we're talking off the bus good. That's one thing that, that uh, our offense has to do. Yeah. All right, Coach, always good. Dave Campo, he is our head coach. We say thanks to Beaver Chevrolet. They always like to wow you right there on Phillips Highway. Great lineup of pickup trucks, SUVs, economy cars, beautiful rides. Make sure you check them out and online, beaverchevrolet.com. They will wow you every single day. Joe C., Dave Campo, another good one. We'll talk to you next week.